Good afternoon, everybody who is joining us for this next session. Uh, I'll give it a couple of seconds whilst um, people enter the room and make themselves comfortable. Hello, everyone. Just a quick uh, message about the chat box. Please do set your um, settings to all panelists and attendees so that messages can be seen uh, by everybody and everyone can join in the conversation. Right, I can see numbers are quite high now. So it looks like most people who are intending to join are here. Welcome to those that are just joining. We're just getting started. Hello, everybody. Okay, once again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Joe Asena Patton again. Um, and uh, thank you for joining this session. Um, and the whole purpose of uh, the next two sessions, actually, will be to highlight um, some of our partner, key partner colleges in the wider region who deliver uh, Pearson's BTEC High National Diploma qualifications as part of a route to education. Um, this session goes from now until 16.20 or 20 past four, uh, after which there'll be a 10 minute break. And then we'll welcome uh, another guest um, who will form sort of part two of this, or of our showcasing of, of BTEC High National Diploma Centres. Now, first you can see um, that, let's have a look, right. Hi, everybody. Okay, so just before I hand over to our next presenter, um, I wanted to let everybody know that our final session today at uh, 10 past five, 1710 um, CET, that is, Pathways Through the Pandemic that Support Employability in the Classroom and Beyond. Um, the UK's um, Coventry University will be joining us for that session, joining and running that session. And um, so I just wanted to highlight that for those that maybe wanted to join and haven't yet signed up. So that's at 10 past five. So that's after the next two sessions. OK, with that, I'd like to introduce you all to Dr. Kari Jaskalainen, the president of Helbus Helsinki School of Business. Kari is the founder and president of Helbus. Um, and in addition to leading the business school, he is mainly focused with marketing and recruiting new students. Now, Elvis is the first and only private Finnish business school in the country. It offers Pearson BTEC IN national diplomas in business. Um, and with the University of Northampton in the UK, they have a topper program um, onto the Bachelor of Arts and an MBA program as well. Now, Halbus has seen some extraordinary, extraordinary growth uh, in its student numbers. Every year, every year it has grown since 2012. This year marks, this quarter even, marks a 70% increase in their student numbers. So with that, I'd like to hand over to Kari, who will take you through um, his uh, presentation as a BTEC HND center. Over to you, Gary. Thank you, Joe. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to meet you. Uh, as Joe said, I'm, I'm the managing director and, and the founder of Helsinki School of Business. This is a picture of our building taken to this morning. We got some new, new snow today. Uh, I will be telling you how, how we started the school from scratch up to a, to a full-scale business school that uh, can deliver bachelor's and, and master's programs. Uh, it actually all started 20 years ago in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Here is Veiko, my dad, who was at that time, uh, he was the rector of the biggest public business school in Finland. And uh, the school had a problem at that time. By the way, the school is today called Alta Business School. They had a problem that time at, uh, that they wanted to send students to an exchange program to Asia, but they didn't have enough destinations. And it was typical to my father that he, he just invented a new solution to the problem. He started a fully owned destination uh, where, where uh, students could participate, take a semester in Kuala Lumpur and, um, 
and pay a nominal fee for that. And Aalto University took 30 to 50 students there every year. Then Veiko finally retired and, and Aalto decided that they, they don't want to continue running the program anymore. So at that point, I and, and my father Veiko, we decided that maybe we can we can take the program and, and we proposed that Aalto could uh, spin it off to our company and they did it. And, and then uh, for the next uh, next 10 years, we took another 300 students from mainly from Finland to Kuala Lumpur. And uh, that's sort of the basis for our, our venture. Veikko is the academic figure, very well-known academic person in Finland. And I myself have been an entrepreneur for, for almost 30 years now. So, so that was a good combination to start something totally, totally new in Finland. Uh, so how do you start a business school from zero? Uh, we basically just got the notion that if we can run one semester in Kuala Lumpur, we probably can run a full program in, in Finland. And, and that's that's how we started. Uh, actually, uh, it started so that I saw an ad about the private university conference in Poland. In Finland, we don't have any other private universities, so, so we didn't know anything about the field. We went there, we learned that Poland has actually 800 universities so so most of them actually struggling financially but anyway we understood that that it's perfectly okay to own and run a run a business school and, and a university so uh, Veikko started writing the curriculum just out of his his uh, experience and and um, we invited those professors we had used in the semester abroad program in Kuala Lumpur we flew them to Finland each one of them came for three weeks and the students took one subject at the time. So they, they studied it for three weeks and then the next professor came and, and, and th there was a new topic. Uh, we didn't know anything about recruiting at that time either, but uh, luckily we get got 12 brave students who started in a totally new institution. Later we, we found out that many of them, their, their parents had studied under Veikos, Veikos uh, delivery. So, so they, uh, they knew Veiko and they, they uh, had faith in us for this reason. Uh, the landscape in Finland is pretty interesting in that sense that uh, the law doesn't define private institutions in any way. It doesn't mention them at all. So it means that uh, they are not forbidden, but there is also no way how the Ministry of Education could recognize us. So, so that leads into an interesting situation. We can't really offer a Finnish degree in Finland. Uh, in the beginning, we didn't even understand the, the importance of recognition and, and accreditation. We just started delivering the program, but then later, later uh, we understood that, that this is something you need. We got started by simply talking to three UK universities who gave us sort of semi, semi uh, Wake profess, uh, promises that they will admit our students if we teach them two years, they can then participate in our, our top up program. But, but uh, it wasn't very formal at that stage. So um, at this point, I might say a couple of words. Why would somebody pay for, for university education in Finland where it's totally free for all the citizens of Finland and EU? Uh, the, the answer is that even though it's free, it's really difficult to get into a university in Finland. Every year, 170,000 young people are applying for the places and there are less than 50,000 places <clears throat> available, which means that uh, two out of three are rejected. So their only chance is to, to take, uh, take the entrance examination next year again. Uh, Many applicants need to try to try to take the exam several years. I, I have heard about students who have been admitted at their fifth trial, so they have wasted five years in getting in into the university. Uh, now, this is this is sort of our niche. It turns out that the starting salary of a, of a master's graduate in, in business it's thirty one thousand euros net after taxes, and and as our total combined tuition fees are 28,000. This means that if you, by studying with us, uh, 
can can shorten your study time even with one year you are already making more money than than what we what you would make if you if you would try to get into the free universities so so that's that's the reason why we get get these students here but still it's a bit small market we get around 70 students to the bachelor program and another 70 to the master's program and we have around 300 here in Finland right now which is okay taking the situation into consideration but but still it's a niche market here in Finland uh, how do we how do we compete here uh, uh, our principle is, is to invite professors from as many cultures and countries as possible so so that the students get the experience and exposure to different cultures and, and people so so i'll just show you who are teaching with us here are people from uk united states argentina india malaysia greek uh, united states again austria indonesia finland portugal and uh, Italy. So the idea is to, to invite people from as many different countries as possible. This gives the exposure to, to, to many cultures to our students. Now, how did we start working with Pearson? Um, we hadn't really known or heard about HND before. I was one day invited to a, a business delegation to, to Qatar. A bunch of Finnish companies were invited there with the Prime Minister of Finland. The idea was to, to help Finnish companies to export things to the to, to, uh, Middle East. And, uh, and uh, it turned out that I couldn't sell anything there, but, but I, I, I attended an interesting presentation that was given by a school that already had, had this uh, Edexcel program that they were offering. It's, Edexcel was, was the body that's today part of Pearson. They are the body that's actually administering the H&D programs. So I, I uh, asked for the contact number to, to Pearson and, and when, when I called Pearson, I was then assigned to Joe. And, and uh, since then we have been working with Joe together. Uh, a couple of words about how, how you become a Pearson Center. Uh, the, the process is quite straightforward. <clears throat> There are some initial discussions where Joe basically tells you the uh, requirements, and, and then if you think you can fulfill them, a uh, person will, will visit, visit your, your facilities, and, and then after that you can submit a formal application, and, and it gets approved, and, and then person offers you some onboarding how to get started with this thing. Uh, the person way is a little bit different from what what many other universities are, are doing so it, it's it's good to have this onboarding i'll be telling about those differences in, in a minute uh, first of all person also offers policies in the beginning we didn't know that you should have policies and and uh, person helps in, in in writing those here are samples of what what policies we are now are like having basically you have a policy for every poss possible situation that that can happen so so uh, so that was a great help that person could help us with, with getting those, those written. Then even the bigger, bigger help in, in, in person offering, offering is, is this uh, specification. Basically, it's the curriculum that, that we teach, teach here. Uh, first of all, it's, it's quite, quite well developed. Person has gone to, to businesses in UK and asked, what do you really need? new graduates to know when they enter the job market and and and, and based on that person has has uh, developed this this uh, specification or curriculum during the two years the students study those 16 units and uh, person defines the learning outcomes meaning that what what does the student need to to, to know after he has studied the unit and also how it's going to be assessed how it's going to be made sure that the student really understood these things and then there's some some helpline, so you can you can ask person if you if you need some some more question uh, more more information. Um, there were some problems. Um, we had some some very very sort of successful professors who 
were accustomed that they were allowed to teach any way they want to, and, and they were allowed to assess any way they want to. And, and, and to be honest, they had a bit difficulties in, in, in uh, adopting the attitude to document everything. The personal system requires you to document all the, the justifications. Why did you give a certain grade to a certain student? So, so that was a typical difficult for some of the professors. And, and, and um, in the end, they sort of felt that they didn't want to comply with so <clears throat> so sort of rigorous system. And, and we need to need, needed to find some other professors instead of many of them. Um, there's another small problem because of this uh, person strict verification system. Uh, everything needs to be documented, and uh, as a result, the professor cannot reward the student for classroom participation because that's not documented anywhere. So, so that's a small problem in Finland, where we Finns are notoriously silent, and the students learn pretty quickly that they are not rewarded from the classroom participation. So what happens is that <laughs> many of them just sit like this and listen. And, and they really learn, but they don't. They don't want to sort of. Uh, they don't want to get in front of others and, and and respond to the professor's questions. So so that's a challenge, especially for American professors. They are horrified because everybody is silent and nobody is participating. They think that they are doing something wrong, but it's just the nature of of Finns. But that's a bit of a problem sometimes. Uh, in the other hand, we have had then a very su uh, supportive external examiner from from Pearson who helps helped us in in, in with with uh, very many of the problems. I'll tell you what the exam external examiner actually tells. It's a part of the Pearson quality control pro pro process. Um, first of all, the students are assessed by essays instead of exams. So. In Finland, the traditional universities, they use exams, but we use essays. The difference, of course, is that in an exam, you need to get about 50% right to pass, but you don't, you're not allowed to use books in the exam. In the essays, it's the other way around. You can write the essay in your home and you can use the books, but you get you have to get everything right. So, so um, you have to meet all the learning outcomes. And, and typically, like, 30% of the students are missing a couple of the learning outcomes and, and they then get feedback from the professor and, and, and uh, they have another chance to submit and, and, and then, then uh, hopefully they will pass. If they don't pass, they have another shot next year. If they don't pass that either, they can fail one course each year, but no more than that. If they fail more, more courses, then the, the studies are over. That doesn't happen really often, but but that's something different in Finland, in, in, uh, in, in the traditional universities in Finland. It's very hard to get, get thrown out of the school, but in, in the UK system that happens. Um, no, anyway, the instructor then uh, assesses these reports. And then after that, our person, one member of our personal assesses them again. She takes samples, maybe like six, six reports and reads them and make sure that the professor has not been too harsh or too soft. And then twice a year, there comes a person from UK who uh, assess, assesses this again, because she's only one day, <clears throat> one day in Finland. She can't take too many samples. She takes one report out of each unit. And, and that's a bit of tough, tough part, because if, if that paper is assessed too softly, uh, the external verificator will say that everybody in the whole cohort will have to take this uh, assignment again. And in addition to that, nobody will graduate before this assignment has been done again. They call this uh, blocking, blocking the release of the uh, certificates, and uh, that's a horror situation. Uh, it has happened twice to us. And after that, we have learned to be very strict towards our own professors. If, if they don't assess the things properly, we just say then that go and remark all the, the reports again. Otherwise, everybody will fail. And, and it's really an effective system. Uh, it's the most rigorous 
quality control program of all higher educational institutions in Finland. And, 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 and um, this has some really good benefits. One is that the progression universities can really trust on the grades that they, they can know that, that they, they know that their students actually have, have studied these things. And the other thing is that um, sometimes students uh, feel that they would need a better grade and they come and, and have all kinds of explanations and, and reasons why would they deserve a better grade. But we don't have any of this haggling. Uh, this is a problem, especially in the United States. Uh, in some US schools, the grade point average is highest A minus, not because of the students would be so good, but instead because the students feel that they are entitled to better grades because they are paying customers. So that's that's a problem somewhere, but, but in, in, in this person system, this is not the problem because, because uh, if you give somebody a grade too easily, the whole cohort will be blocked later. So, so it's, it's, it's very easy and very, very easy to be fully transparent towards the students and tell them that this is the best we can give you for these and these and these reasons. Uh, so we started off by, by offering um, two, two years of this higher national diploma in Finland. And, and uh, then we said to the students that take the third year abroad uh, we had these three progression universities, and, and as a result of this uh, H and D being so well known, they the number of these universities grew to fifty. Uh, we could send our students to fifty universities in ten different countries. Uh, but then we started looking for a way to offer the whole program and the master's program in Finland, and, and finally we met University of Northampton, who after some, some inspections and considerations then allowed us to, to uh, deliver their program in, in Finland. So basically now we are offering the higher national diploma for the, for the years one and two. And, and then after that, the students take the third year of the bachelor's program. And, and if they want, they can after that even study the, study the master's program with us. So basically the higher national diploma level four is the same as first year of university, level five is the second year of university, then University of Northampton's top, top up is the third year of university. After that, the student already has then uh, the bachelor degree. And after that, he can basically go to four places. He can continue in, in our MBA program. He can go to the job market. Our students are very well employed. He can take he can apply to any other master's program in Finland, or he can apply to thousands of master's programs abroad. So, so this, that's a very good foundation for, for their career or continuing their studies. So I'll be concluding shortly. Uh, here are a couple of benefits of the h and program for students perspective. One is that the learning outcomes are really clear and students knows exactly what's expected from him. So in the beginning of each unit, the student gets like five page long description of the learning outcomes and how he can demonstrate that he masters them by writing the report. Uh, all the units follow the same logic and structure. So once they learn to, to write the report for the specific unit, it's the same system for all other units. and, and they can then start writing their reports from the day one of the new, new unit. As soon as they spot the professor saying something useful for the report, they can, they can write it down. Our school works in this uh, module system that students study three weeks in, in, in um, concentrating in one topic at, at the time. So the, the clear advantage is that uh, the deadlines are distributed evenly across the term and instead of the end of the, the term. So basically the students have eight deadlines, one and a half week each from other. So, so they, it's, it's going like a train after one and a half week, they write, submit a, a new paper. That's, that's easier to keep, keep up than, than, than having five exams in the end of December. And of course the students avoid the gap years doing our system. Now, from the point of view of the receiving universities, those who would like to receive h and graduates, there are clear, clear benefits. One is that because of this very rigorous uh, 
quality control, the universities really know that uh, uh, the student knows what it says in, in his or her diploma. The second benefit is that the students are accustomed to hard work. In our school, they do three academic years in two calendar years because we use also the summertime. So, so the students are really hard working. Those who actually graduate, they, they, they are working fast and hard. Uh, the HD is standardized, so it's the same program, same curriculum here in Finland, in Africa, in Asia, in Middle East. So, so once you map it once in your own uh, curriculum, then it's basically same for everyone. You can start admitting students from Africa or Europe or, or Asia. So that's a benefit for the receiving university. And it's of course a good source for top-up programs and, and also it uh, provides you uh, high quality substitutes for, for dropouts if, 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 uh, if you need like fresh students for directly to the third year. So this is what I wanted to tell you about this, this program. Uh, my school is open for cooperation with you in, in two ways. Should you want to start a similar program and use our professors in your country, we'll be happy to happy to do a joint program with you in your country. Or if you have like, for example, level three graduates whom you want, want to offer a place in, in a university program, you can send them to Finland and, and we'll be happy to, to receive them. So, so uh, this is my contact information here. I'll, I'll be happy to, to talk to you further if, if somebody becomes interested. And, and uh, I believe we have now some time for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for uh, your presentation there. And even though you and I have worked together for many years, it's always nice to hear from you as to how your students get on with you uh, at school and, and, and the program generally. Um, that was really interesting. Thank you so much. Um, we do have a couple of questions. Some have come pre-submitted for people that um, couldn't join the session, but were really interested in, in hearing from you. Um, and then there's a couple, I think, in the, in the chat box. Um, let me go to the First one, since this afternoon um, we're really linking career focused education, of course, with a, a career and employment. Um, and so the first question there is, would you be able to share what kind of professional careers uh, that some of your, um, your, your students have gone on to do? What kind of things do they do with uh, their BTEC HND plus the you know, top up degree with the University of Northampton? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Good question, and, and uh, they get employed very well in typical entry positions of like uh, American uh, consulting companies, Ernst and Young or KPGM, or or then uh, Finnish banks, insurance companies, or or then well-known international brands like Hewlett Packard, Tesla, or or IBM, or, or companies like that, and in also tens of of sort of more unknown Finnish uh, small businesses or medium-sized companies and that typically they are entry positions but but they they proceed very fast like one girl she she graduated two years ago and she has had already three managerial positions like team team lead positions in in three different companies in in basically two different countries so Michael Kors was one of them, and, and mobile, mobile was another one. So, so they get they get like really good start in their careers. Great, and just related to that, then, do you have you ever had to deal with queries from companies, perhaps, that might be looking at your graduates uh, as potential, you know, employees? Do they ever come back to you and question you as to what they've studied and, and why is it they've been able to study such um, a varied program um, within this sort of transnational education setting that we've been talking about this afternoon? Not really about the companies. I mean, I, I can see that they are well received because they could get these good jobs, but, but, but from parents, we get really good feedback. Uh, I, I stopped counting at 16 when we, we got the, student number 16 who had uh, already another family member studying with us. So that's, that basically shows that the parents are very, very happy to send, send all their children to, to our, our school. So, so from that, I know that, uh, that uh, students are happy and parents are happy. And of course, from the 
I can see from LinkedIn that the, the, the employees, employers have been also very happy with the students. Great. And now we are at time, but I'd like to just take one final question. And, and it's, it's around um, what uh, do, do students have the flexibility uh, or do they have to finish their program within the two years that you described earlier? Uh, well, this is this is going again uh, uh, according a schedule. So if you miss one unit, uh, it comes again next year. But we we have also an online program where the the same units are sort of taped or or recorded. So basically, if the student wants doesn't want to wait a full year, he can he can then do it independently independently based on the <coughs> recorded sessions of the online track. So so yeah, they they can basically do it uh, do it if they, if they miss a unit they can they can re retake that anytime they want to do it right. so you have a flexible system there okay well that does bring us to the end of this session um, as I say it's, it's one of two highlights that we are going to uh, be presenting this afternoon uh, there is a 10 minute break um, so um, thank you very much once again for uh, to everybody for joining the session and, and special thanks to you, Carrie, for uh, letting us into the world of Helpers. Good afternoon, everyone.